There has been a revival in small-scale flower growers, not only in dreamers taking the jump into the industry, but also consumers looking for locally grown and eco-conscious products. People are rediscovering the enchanting magic of local flowers and the human-to-earth connection that also comes from knowing your flower farmer face-to-face. I think after the shock of these last past couple years, people are craving beauty and hope, which is something locally grown flowers can absolutely fulfill. Starting a flower farm in the year 2022 is going to look a little different compared to when we started just a short seven years ago. Today, we are going to go over our top five tips on how to start a flower farm in 2022. Number one is to find your niche. With the revival of the local flower movement, there has also been a huge uptick in dreamers taking the leap into flower farming, which is absolutely wonderful. Sure, there is more competition, but also the market is primed to welcome more of us small scale flower farmers. With that said, you need to figure out your niche. What are you going to offer to your ideal customer that is different and desired in your local market? For example, are you looking to sell event flowers to florists or do you want to dive into floral designing too? Or perhaps you are looking to grow blooms to supplement your already thriving floral design business. Maybe you want to play it more low key through farmers markets, driveway stands, a you pick and the likes. Perhaps you want to go super specialty offering edible flowers, herbs, or dried flowers. There are so many options to choose from. All you have to do is identify what area fits your interest best. Here at Sierra Flower Farm, I knew I ultimately wanted to focus on two areas, event work and bouquet subscriptions. I wanted to be able to not only grow the blooms, but to design with them as well. Since we are small scale growers, the added value of my designing with the blooms and selling directly to consumer is more profitable for us. We are also in the Tahoe area, which is a huge wedding destination. So that definitely helps us with getting the wedding work that fits us best. Now, just because those are our two main areas of focus doesn't mean we haven't or don't sell other products and through various outlets. The amount and size of the events that are getting booked have begun to really set the tone of the upcoming season for us, where we are always refining our options. Remember, just because you choose one niche to focus on in the beginning of your journey doesn't mean you can't switch or refine your area of focus as your business grows. Once you have figured out your niche, then you need to make it easy for your customers to purchase from you, which leads us to tip number two. You need to make a stunning and user-friendly website. Over these last couple of years, we all got knocked a little off our routines to say the least and connecting with your customer base became anything but typical. For us, we had been building our market through our website from the beginning and I can't imagine what the past couple years would have looked like for us without it. Our normal sales outlets were shut down, but yet our customers still had a desire for the joy local flowers could provide and even more so. We were able to continue connecting with our customers and getting product to them thanks to our website and email campaigns. As mentioned, we also get a lot of destination couples coming to the area. Having a clean, nice website makes that first connection with our potential wedding clients a pleasant one. One of the most powerful features of a website and an associated email list is that there are less algorithms in between you and your customer base. Unlike social media, which only shows your content to a fraction of your audience, the percentage of customers that see our content from our website and email list is far greater than social media. So make a website, have it be easy to navigate and make sure it provides a positive experience for your customers. Our website alone can't carry all the weight, which leads me to our third tip. Network with other small business owners and creatives in your local market. 
Having local small business friends is essential. It is amazing how supportive other small businesses can be to each other. And together, we can be, create quite a force to be reckoned with. Having these connections will be beneficial in more than just being able to have pickup spots or pop-ups, but you can learn from each other, support each other, challenge each other, and inspire each other. Don't think only other flower farmers will get you. Your fellow creatives and entrepreneurs will get you too. It is amazing how much business is the same from industry to industry and in turn how much you can learn from other people in their unrelated fields. Speaking of creatives, I'm going to challenge you with our next tip. Tip number four is to become your own photographer. I think flower farmers either totally dive into and fall in love with digital photography or become so overwhelmed they don't know where to begin. We are in the age of social media, websites, email campaigns, and so much digital media. This is what will drive customers to your farmer's market booth, show customers what you've got blooming, and brides to see your design style. Product photography is challenging, but can also make or break your product. A beautiful arrangement not photographed well will not do your beautiful work justice, but well lit and nicely composed will show how amazing it looks as it does in person. Having photos of you and your farming journey tells a story and helps you connect with your customers. I recommend ditching the phone photos, save those for Instagram stories, and if you are able to get an affordable mirrorless camera with something like a nifty 50 lens to get you started. Figure out how to work Lightroom, or at the minimum find a nice preset that you like that doesn't distort the natural colors of your blooms too much. With this tip, I also am going to challenge you to have fun with it. This is a great task to practice during winter and those early spring days where you can hone your photography skills while not under the pressure of the season. Lastly, don't be afraid to post content that you aren't completely in love with in your early days of learning the craft. The great thing about digital media is you can also always replace those early photos with others as you become more skilled. Our last tip I think is a pretty big one, simple in nature, but incredibly hard to remember while in the midst of starting your flower farm. Tip number five is to be patient and have fun. Okay, I guess that's really two tips. Growing flowers takes patience, but you are also going to have to be patient with yourself as you wear the various hats of being a flower farming business owner. You will have times where you get frustrated, walk away during those moments and come back to it refreshed. Perhaps you will be able to problem solve from coming at it from a different angle. Just know that the flowers are survivors and so are you. As we head into our seventh season, patience continues to be a virtue. I often find myself getting impatient or anxious and having to walk away, hug my kids or switch tasks. In haste, we can make poor decisions that have a terrible domino effect on an entire season. Take the time to digest, problem solve, and enjoy the quiet moments of winter and early spring. Don't overfuss on your seedlings out of impatience and boredom. It's easy to love them to death. While waiting, plan, plot, scheme. Use your brain while it's functioning because once that season hits, you won't have that energy to. Have fun overcoming these new challenges and definitely take a minute to stop and smell the sweet peas. There you have it, our top five tips on how to start a flower farm in the year 2022. It is an exciting year to leap into the journey of flower farming as people have slowed down and revisited some of the smaller things in life that makes an ordinary day such a special one. There may be a lot of other people jumping on board the flower farming journey, but that's okay. Find your niche, make a beautiful and simple to use website to snag those sales, network with other small businesses and creatives, so that you have that support system. Become your own photographer. It is essential in these days of digital media. And lastly, be patient with yourself, your flowers, and your business. Embrace where you are and have fun growing as the flower farmer while your flowers grow alongside you. I hope you found this video helpful and inspiring. If you did and you wanna dive into more content like this, we are thrilled to announce for those who sign up for our flower farming newsletter, we will be breaking down the different tasks and application of those tasks in a more interactive way with exclusive content, checklists, tips, 
along with some live stream chats. To sign up for the newsletter, visit our blogs and video page on our website, sierrafirefarm.com. Thank you for watching, and until next time, we are looking forward to helping you hand bloom soon. Oh, 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 oh,